All right, we are back in the studio, AKA my bathroom. What we will determine today is what ISO should we set for this scene and how to approach setting ISO for other scenes. This is a bit of a follow-up from my previous video where I was discussing overexposing and then pulling it down in post. A lot of people were mentioning just shoot at a lower ISO. Today, I'm going to show you how that might not always be the right move. Right now, we have a pretty normal setup here and on the monitor, the bottle looks normal, but since it's the first shot of the day, I'm gonna check exposure. What we want is the light in the background to not be clipping. I am going to stop down until that clipping is gone, which I already know is at a 2.8. And I'm looking at false colors based on the log image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shoot a shot at multiple different ISOs, and then we'll look at that in Resolve. I'm gonna start at ISO 200, 400, 800, 1600, where they shot 1917 and on the same camera and 3200. So before we look at those clips at differing ISOs, I wanna show one set of clips that were shot all at the same settings besides the shutter angle to prove the HDR wheels in their ability to adjust exposure in the same way that you adjust in camera. So we have 180 degree shutter here and we drop down by one stop until 11.25 degrees. So 180, 90, 45, 22.5, 11.25. There's a grade on the timeline and with our HDR wheels we can see that we adjust by one stop each time. 180, 90, 45, 22.5, 11.25. And we can see that the scopes are not changing outside of the noise. And then we can go to this shot which we just saw in the studio and this goes from ISO 200, 400, 800, 16, and 32. We used the same HDR wheels adjusting by one stop each time. Our image looks a little different when we go from clip to clip. 200, 400, 8, 16, 32. Even here we can see the brightness in the highlights and we can see this in the scopes. If we look right here where our just below clipping light source here was, this is at a ISO 3200, and we can see where it is at a 200. So our highlights are more protected in the higher ISO. So now the question becomes, where do I want to shoot in this scene? We can go to 200 here and see that we are still just below clipping and the image looks dark. The image looks too dark and not what I want it to look like. And while it's all fun to get into the technical details, when you are shooting video, you are looking at a monitor most of the time. There'll be a DIT looking at scopes to make sure that you're all good, but mostly you're looking at a monitor and you want things to look good. So if we wanna shoot at ISO 200, here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to remove our ND because the image is too dark and I am going to expose by iris and somewhere around there looks good to me. I will then check our exposure and it is clipping. And again, we're looking at the log image. So the log image is clipping and I will stop down until that is gone and we are here. So I'll roll on this or I can say, I'm gonna expose how I think it should be exposed and have it look good. So to keep things consistent, I'll bring up the scopes. Maybe I'll do the bottom of this on 50. So the bottle looks good there. We will roll on that. The only problem is our exposure is clipping. So I'm just gonna try this again at 3200. We will get the product in the same spot as it was before, that bottom part at 50. And since we have stopped down so much, I'm gonna add an ND and see if we can get that back up to 50. And we will turn off our scopes and check our exposure and we are not clipping. So being at 3200 is in fact protecting me from clipping. So we can go all the way to here and not be clipping. The only way that I'm hitting record on this is if, just like the last video, I put in some stop reduction LUTs. So let's go with a minus two stop. So now my image is looking good and my highlights are not clipping. Where when we were at ISO 200, our image was looking good and our highlights were clipping. So make your own conclusions on that. 
Every camera is different. This is how it works on the Alexa. We then would bring this down in post by two stops. This works nicely when post and production is very much aligned and this can be used more for technical shoots where you're doing something for a very specific reason and you know what's going to happen in the color grade. Something else that you could consider, I'm gonna roll one at 3200. I am then gonna roll one at 800 and we'll do one more at 200 and then we'll jump into resolve. Okay, so we have the three clips in resolve. There's a grade on the timeline. This is 3200, 800, and 200. If we bring 3200 down to the exposure of 200, how will that look? And the same if we bring the 200 up to the exposure of the 3200, how will that look? So we have an HDR adjustment on each and based on what we saw in the last DaVinci session, we know that the differing ISOs will change the look a little bit. So I just did these kind of by eye and matching them up right around here. You can see just matching it up by eye on the scopes. And the higher ISO looks a little less contrasty and you have more in the highlights as we can see here. We have a 3200 ISO clip right here and a 200 ISO clip right here and the noise is looking the same. We'll take a still of the 200 and put it on the 3200 and match for right here. So that's matching up and I'm gonna zoom in here. Couldn't even find the line. Go into thousand percent and we can see that our noise looks the same this is the 3200 clip and right here is the 200 clip and our noise is looking very very similar we can do the same thing with grabbing a still from the 3200 clip and going to the 200 and we'll just match it up on the bottle that's pretty close i'm going to zoom in to a thousand and our line is right in the middle here so this is our 3200 ISO clip and this is our 200 ISO clip and we are going to raise up that exposure and we can see that the noise looks similar here as well. We can see that bringing this 3200 ISO clip down to match the exposure of what the 200 ISO clip looks like that we get a similar noise performance. So this to me suggests that what I was doing in the last video is very beneficial because if I shoot at 3200 ISO and make sure that I'm not clipping and make sure that a minus four stop reduction on the camera looks good and then bring it down by four stops in post, I can get some nice clean results while retaining highlights. Whereas if I'm shooting at 160, things get a little bit harder in the highlight department. And in a scenario like a controlled studio environment as we saw here in this video that worked nicely and if you're outside it could work nicely as well as long as you are taking a look at your false colors or your zebras or your scopes and making sure that you are not clipping to be able to have the benefits of using a high ISO and also the benefits of a low ISO is a pretty cool thing to do keep in mind again every camera is different and you just need to test in order to come to conclusions on your own for your camera but i found this to be pretty interesting on the alexa all right that's it peace